welcome back to a new episode at the show. And today we have Sarah Hefty in the room. Welcome, Sarah. It's great having you. Thanks, Joe. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. So um, we've known each, each other for a couple of months now. Now, and um, I was um, how do you say? I was surprised and also how do you say? Positively surprised to witness the journey that you've recently embarked on. Not so recently. Where are we in day? Is it? It's certainly in a double digits. But is it day? day it's it's we're um, in the mid forties at this point 40s. already. I know. I know. <laughs> Well, so what we're talking about is like we have you have a daily video report about your journey of becoming a happy person. Yes. And that's basically usually two to four or five minute videos, um self -rec recording yourself, sharing with your friends, followers, people who who yeah, who you who you have in your network through right social media um and then you share with them what what made you happy that day and what action you take to become a happy person and coming out of place that we've also talked about previously on this very podcast um with mental health issues of some sort um like that any of us can run into i've mentioned mm -hmm. another episode around mental well-being or general well-being really that the brain is nothing but another organ in our bodies and we need to take care of it just as much as we do with any other organ in our system like physical system um i've shared that i had depression in the past we had guests who also suffered from mental health um issues and conditions you can get out of it and you're getting yourself out of it and you let everyone participate in this journey so i think it's well it's for sure it's deeply inspiring thanks for sharing that first of all second please tell us more about it like where how the journey yeah. started and what you made Absolutely. you what made you feel you want to share that with a wider audience right <laughs> so it is the thing that a lot of people keep you know very close close to themselves right and so where i started where i'm at now is um i have recently faced the fact that I have struggled with anxiety, depression, and um, earlier I had, had been diagnosed with PTSD. And so I had worked with psycho psychologists and therapists and, um, you know, to receive those diagnoses. And um, what the funny, the funny thing with the, the um, depression and anxiety diagnosis was my therapist literally told me, he was like, well, we just need to put something on paper. So, and, and he, he was just like, you know, in order for the insurance, like we, we need to have something on paper. So this is what we're going to put. And I think he either was being very sincere in that statement, or he recognized very quickly that I was not ready to accept those things about myself. Mm -hmm. And um, what was interesting is like, I could accept the PTSD diagnosis several years earlier from a psychologist, but I wasn't ready to hear anxiety and depression from him. And so that was several years ago at this point. And um, one second. I was just like, yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry, one second, sorry to interrupt, but just for those who are not um, familiar with the acronym, other people, people like me. Oh, say, sure. <laughs> yes, yeah. Post-traumatic stress disorder. And right. it happens several months or years, sometimes decades after we experience a tra traumatic situation, like loss of a parent or a close sibling or an accident. And mm -hmm. the brain is and, apparently able to cover that up for for quite some time. Yeah, that was my experience. That was my experience. I had my um, maternal grandmother had passed away from cancer. It was a really horrific battle with cancer when I was a child. And I never processed that grief. And so here I was at that point, 25 years later. And my psychologist was like, or my um, psychiatrist rather was like, that's PTSD because I couldn't even talk about her without bursting into tears. And so complicated, all, all the things, right? And so we worked through that. And I was like, yes, I have processed my grandma's mother's grief. Yes, <laughs> I have done that work. Um, came came through that diagnosis. And so then, you know, a couple of several, like many years later, I had the diagnosis of depression and anxiety. 
and wasn't ready to face it until I was. And that happened, you know, fairly, very recently. It was several, or several months ago now at this point where I, I was like, you know what, I do have anxiety. I do struggle with anxiety. I do struggle with depression. What am I going to do about it? Um, and once I faced that realization or that reality for myself, that this is what professionally trained people are seeing in me, and this is what the label is, and this is, so now I have more information, right? Instead of being in place of denial, I can now do something with it. And at that same time, as it happened, I came across this idea of, you know, whatever path you take is going to be hard. So, um, so pin that idea for a second. And I've, for a long time with coaching, there's, which I've been trained in, there's always this um, question of like, well, what if that were possible? What if, what if you could do X, Y, Z, right? There's always that possibility um, factor that's in there, that possibility question. And so coming back to what we just pinned a moment ago, as far as the, whatever you choose is going to be hard. I was like, okay, well, what if choosing happiness is hard? And what if choosing to dwell in anxiety and depression is hard? And not saying this is, you know, the right way forward for anybody other than myself, quite frankly, but for me, um, I, I choose not to go to medication and, and that's that's a very personal choice and I'm not here to you know proclaim one thing over the other for any <laughs> anyone it's a, absolutely a personal choice um and for me I choose not to and so I was like okay what can I do in my personal life to to move forward and when I realized that okay what if happiness isn't always rainbows and unicorns and butterflies and sunshine and, and it just like easy like what what if happiness isn't always easy what if people actually work for happiness and put effort into being a happy person? I'm like, well, uh, I'm going to try that um, because I was putting a lot of effort into being anxious and depressed. I was spending a lot of time like overthinking things or um, disassociating perhaps um, of spending a lot of time like on the couch watching Netflix or whatever, <laughs> mm -hmm. whatever the streaming service happens to be. Right. And just really checking out or being in denial. I'm like, that's, that's energy and effort I'm putting into those activities. What if I try something else? And what if I try having my North Star be happiness and burning what actually makes me happy? Um, so I'll pause there for, for a moment because the next thing I'll get into is kind of like how I, I went through that and trying to find like what I like, what I want, what my needs are. And that was kind of the next step in that process. Mm. But that's where it started was a realization of like, okay, I, this is where I'm at. Where do I want to be? And defining that a little bit more. Yeah, and that's, thanks for pausing here because that's really a defining point. And to me, it's also quite recent um, with the depression. Yes. <laughs> to accept this is not part of me. And it's, I don't know if I would call it like, a, I don't know, like some people carry cancer and give it a name or whatever. And then hopefully get rid of it eventually. But depression is really here to stay one way or the other. And it's um, yeah, it's then on us to learn how to deal with it and to find strategies not to let it overcome ourselves. And that's basically what you're doing, right? And right, right. And this is something I have been um, working on with without the labels for the last 15 years, to be honest, or really like. I've always been looking for like personal development and growth mm -hmm. opportunities. So that's what, what led me to coaching was just like, oh, I can help make people, um, teach people, coach people to have um, a happier existence, quite frankly. And, and, and I'm doing that for myself along the way. Um, and it really wasn't until I faced the fact of that, yeah, oh, okay. Like I have a harder time than other people. And I really got to see that with my husband because my husband, we've been together 23 years, you know, since we were 17, 18 years old, yeah. we, we've known each other for a time <laughs> uh -huh. and he does not struggle with mental health. And so I have that in my home, right. As far as like, Oh, this is how a healthy person has boundaries and defines their wants and needs and sticks to that and mm -hmm. puts themselves for, and he just does this. Right. And here I am uh, from, you know, week to week, day to day, sometimes, you know, struggling with X, Y, Z, like I'll have a good run of it for a bit. And then I'll like, then something will pause. And we started noticing it with like, 
um, projects. Like I would go from one project to the next, never finishing anything because I would get in a rut. Um, and we always had like but really entrepreneurial light mindset. words. Sorry to interrupt, but what you just mm-hmm. described is what we've also been, we met in a business development course. And it's the entrepreneurial mm-hmm. mindset. We like to create, but not to conclude kind of thing. Right. <laughs> so it's also- right. And in that case, you get support. <laughs> yeah. Right? You get assistance, you get support, you can hire people, you hire a team. Yeah. And, and you know, they can take those things and run with it. But from um, an internal perspective, mm. it's- um, for me anyways, I'll, I'll speak for myself. It um, was very draining as far as not finishing things, you know? And and so for me, now I'm starting to finish things. Case in point, um, I've, I'm doing a 21 day yoga challenge. And mm-hmm. as you know, like the daily um, video clip that I do is called being a happy person. And so one of my friends of, you know, a couple of decades at this point, she reached out, she now lives in the area. And she's like, hey, this yoga studio is branding themselves as like as like the happy place in our town. She's like, you need to do this. I'm like, that's all I need to hear. I have done yoga prior to this maybe five or six times in my life. I know it's really good for you. Like I've studied holistic health coaching. I know how good yoga can be for you, um, but I wouldn't do it for myself. Uh-huh. And so now I stepped into this challenge and we're on day 17 of it. And I have my 17 to 21 and I will finish it. Um, but, it, and so that, even like finishing off like one session at a time has brought a lot of fulfillment Mm -hmm. and I know the good that it's bringing to my body because it's releasing tension so that was really the thing was like I started with the mindset because that's what you work on when you're in coaching and therapy and that you're in your mind and your heart right Mm -hmm. and now I've done 15 20 years of work on those things and so I'm adding in the physical side as well to catch up with the work that I've been doing internally and it's making a huge huge difference in how I show up throughout the day. And, um, I found that to be really very, very helpful. So I'm trying out a few other things like pickleball, which has more of a social aspect to it. And then, um, Wait, can you explain that for a minute? Because I've never heard that term before. I watched oh, oh, okay. I yeah. Heard it's, talk about it. It's a local sport, team sports. It's, um, Is it? yeah, I'm not sure how, Sorry. I'm sure it's international. Like I'm sure there's people playing it around the world, but, um, I don't know how widespread <laughs> that might, might, may or may not be, but pickleball is kind of like ping pong on a tennis court. So, oh it's, my God, it, that already sounds like yeah. fun. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It's a good time. <laughs> and you're typically, especially if you're playing in doubles, because uh-huh. um, it's, and it's typically geared towards retirees because it's not as um, the athletic requirements of tennis aren't there. And you're still moving. Do not like misunderstand. We, my husband and I showed up in wearing jeans the first time we showed up to a pickleball court. That was not proper attire. <laughs> we quickly learned. <laughs> but I mean, it's doing stuff like that, right? Getting out of your comfort zone, trying something new and yeah. practicing. Practice. And that, that was hard. That was like, that was a hard choice, but we knew it was going to make like myself happier. I played tennis in high school. And so, um, and I've always wanted to be really good at that. And I'm like, okay, I get to be a beginner with it. So that's a, a shift in thinking. Um, I get to be around people and community who are learning together because it's a fairly new sport in our area. But also mm-hmm. the mind shift that you just mentioned, you get to be a beginner is for once a threat because at this age in our thirties and forties, in my case, um, we think we need, to, <laughs> we need to have it all together. We need to know our game. We need to, and then to start with something new is quite intimidating or feels like, but like once we dedicate ourselves, okay, I'm trying something new. I get to be a beginner. I can allow myself mm-hmm. to not know everything about this new thing and learn, right? Surf and soak it in. And that's the process. Exactly. Sorry. And I've, I've been like that since I was a little kid where it was like, I, I grew up in what, you know, they talk about like the fixed mindset versus the growth mindset. And so fixed mindset being very perfectionistic, people pleasing, um, you know, you're, you're based on your talents, not on how you persist with something. And that's the fixed mindset. So it's like, if you're not perfect at something right away, you think you're a failure in the fixed mindset. That was how I grew up good, bad, right or wrong. Like, that's just how it was. Um, I like, we had the best, we did the best with the tools we had. Right. And so, um, that's why I always got good grades. I was always very active in the community, et cetera, et cetera, checked all the boxes. Um, 
but I always feared that I wouldn't like, if I, if something didn't come easy to me, I would not do it. Mm. So, um, shifting that into a growth mindset of being like, I get to be a beginner. I get to learn, I get to make mistakes and not get kicked out. I get, you know, <laughs> it's and, and to, and to just continue being accepted. So mm-hmm. it was a lot of work on accepting myself. And that's what the growth mindset allows for folks is um, I'm learning <laughs> that it's, it's a place where you get to make mistakes and still continue forward. You're not kicked out. Mm. And the pickleball community has demonstrated that very beautifully to me. Um, and so that's why I really appreciate them so darn much. And it is always interesting going into like a new sports arena and showing up as I am and, um, playing, you know, because you don't know what to expect and it's, but it's that challenge, right? That's where I'm like, okay, happiness gets to be a bit of a challenge and that's okay. But I know how good I'm going to feel after pickleball. And I know like the competitor comes out of me on the court and that's always fun too. So (laughs) find what, you know, it's just a matter of like really finding, what lights you up yeah. and then doing the work to actually get there. Mm. And that's, that's the struggle that I have found with like happiness is like, mm. it's so easy. Or in my case, it's so easy to just um, sometimes talk yourself out of going and showing up. And so that's where my challenge comes in as far as like, you have time, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to feel so much better once you complete whatever the thing might be and um, go for it. Like, you know, it's, you have to go for life. Right. Uh, there's several things I would like to reflect on what you just said. So for once, the dilemma with being a perfectionist from our wiring, <laughs> I think that applies to many researchers. And then there's a lot of talking around imposter syndrome in academia nowadays. And I don't know, like it's, it's so much that I'm getting tired of hearing the term. Because, like, I also heard, thankfully, somebody else talk about this, like, it's not imposter syndrome you're talking about, is you get to be, especially as a researcher, we are on the edge of knowledge each and every day. We don't know what we're researching. Like, that's the whole point of being a researcher. So, of course, there's something that other people would easily label as imposter syndrome. You, you cannot know more than you know today. And there's likely more to discover for that for once but then also like I, I i i love what you said for the process like you know what makes you happy and then you know it's not gonna be, be easy to get there so to at the point of thinking about okay what can i do to feel better about myself and become a happy person today and then also tomorrow and next month by you know just learning a new skill Mm-hmm. And then being aware, like what role does that play? Being aware is going to take work and effort and right. energy brain. And how is that, that was the key. Holding back, like many of us. Yeah, that was absolutely the key. Just knowing and and I don't know, I don't know who's talking about that, if anyone, right? Because it's just like that for me, and I think for people like me who grew up with a fixed mindset and a very hierarchical nature as far as like parents and, and teachers and everybody else is there, they're on a pedestal and you must follow what they say type of a thing, and you must be perfect in what you say, otherwise you're bad, right? Um, and so if you're bad, you're not loved, and then it's like a whole a whole nightmare <laughs> up here. So, and I think that's, um, I'm not, I know I'm not alone in that. And so, yeah, realizing that it is work, and you get to use all those skills that you've you know, because you put a lot of work into, or I, I should also, again, I'll speak for myself, I've put a lot of work into um, you know, being an anxious person and being a depressed person, it's like, oh God, what if I get to put a lot of work into being a happy person? And that's, and for me, that's been the key. And as you were talking um, a, a, a minute ago there, the, the term that came to mind for me is as I was trying out, because I don't know myself very well, like I'm 41 years old and I am now, I feel like I'm kind of like in my early twenties as like on the development scale, as far as like I am identifying who I am, what I like, because mm-hmm. I, I haven't yet done that so much in my life. And I'm starting that now. I find that's true with a lot of divorced women. I'm not divorced, but um, I see that off. I've seen that in my, my parents, right? Because my mom had always identified as like, oh, she was my, my mom or my dad's wife. And now she's Jane. Yeah. And she's like, who is Jane as a 75 plus 
year old woman, right? So um, or maybe I come by it honestly, right? Who knows? Um, but the, the term that it came to mind was a, a happiness nomad because I'm trying out different social circles, right? I'm trying out different social or, or happiness activities, whether they're with other people or by, by myself. And um, I found painting was really good for me because it was a creative outlet. And that was a need that I have that was not being met in my, I know you're gonna be surprised, in my corporate day job, creativity was not like much love to my corporate job. It's, done, it's served me in many, many ways, don't get me wrong. But from a creative side and having my voice heard, um, that's not my role in, in, that, in that work, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I need to have a place where I can just put forward all of my creativity and, and do it as long or as short as I want and can go in any direction. And I found that in painting. So um, that was one, one thing. Again, I didn't know that about myself several years ago and I, I found it a couple of years mm -hmm. back. Sounds like happiness also has a lot to do with purpose and finding a purpose. Yes, <laughs> for me, it does. For me, it does. I I have read so many books on purpose. So it's interesting that you bring that up. So way to nail that on the right on the head there. <laughs> because it very much applies to me. And none of them were helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Several <laughs> lines of conversation here. But yeah, so why purpose for you? Well, because I never knew what my purpose was. And so um, when I was, I'm going to go back to high school with this, Joe. Uh, when I, so I graduated from high school in 2000. In 1998, when, you know, we finally got internet for the first time with the dial-up and everything like that. I was, as a sophomore, into my junior year of high school. So um, 16, 17 years old. I would be online. And I grew up in a rural area. So I'm eight miles out of a town of 2,000 people on a 160-acre farm on dial-up internet looking at whatever college rankings were out at the time and whatever job was paying the most and had like the best lifestyle. So I found actuarial science. I have studied actuarial science in college because I didn't know myself well enough to, and I, lo I do love math, like don't get me wrong, I love math. I, you know, I, I work... Um, my, my, I work in a bank, so I do like finance, you know, so it's like, it's, I like it, but do I love it? Mm. No, I love people. I love helping people move um, into, from fine to like amazing. And so I didn't know myself, but that, but that's where it went back to was like when I was seven, 16, 17. Um, and I'm so sorry, I forgot the original question as far as what, what was what was the starting point? Well, of this? Question really, just to reflect on what purpose means to you and how it relates. Oh, purpose, yeah. So I couldn't. I didn't know what my purpose was. So I was such a good people pleaser, and I was like, well, I checked the boxes for my parents. They, I know I'm going to college. Like that was prescribed. So I'm going to, I'm going to university, and and from there, I was just really lost, and up until now. You know, I, um, I I haven't known my purpose. And so I, what I have found for myself is I'm a multi-passionate person. And you saw that with like the content I sent over as far as like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing the other, and I'm letting that be okay, right? And that's something I have always been from the time I was a kid. Um, I've always been into different projects. I've done everything from showing pigs at the state fair to, you know, working in a, in a, a fancy schmancy hair salon mm -hmm. that is just the most uppity up thing you could think of. So I've, I've done the full range of these things right. and it's just, you know, that's who I am. I've had more jobs than anybody, I'm quite sure. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but it's been fantastic and that, that serves me quite well. And so now I get to take the, these 40 years, 41 years that I've been on this planet and start sharing it out and training other people on like, here's what I've come across. Here's the wisdom that worked and, um, Take it, leave it, um, but know about it. And so you can make your own choices and move forward because here's what's really helped me out in living a better life and being a happier person and having that happiness as my North Star. That is my purpose. It's like, and everything else falls underneath that. Like my business, my, my work, my choices. It's like, does this improve my happiness or not? And if it does, it's a yes. And if not, Thanks for the opportunity, but no. <laughs> okay, so 
I just quickly want to share that I share it was like three or so weeks ago now when I suddenly felt so happy like and I like w- with at age 43 I finally understood and felt what happiness really means to me at this moment first of all it's in the moment it's not something in the future or anything yeah Again, it had to do very much with my purpose because I felt I finally stepped into my purpose. Knowing about your purpose is one thing, but then to have a, the confidence, okay, I'm now there. People are listening. I have something to share that means something for people. People can actually gain from what I share with them. And like that actually stepping into the purpose that everybody keep to- keeps talking about, like, yeah, how do you do that? But I, I would say now, now that I've done it, is that you just do it. <laughs> Right, right, but it's like, what does that mean, Joe? What does that mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Loved. I I would love to add something to that because this is something that I haven't yet spoken about on being a happy person. Um, because it's literally happened in the last you know twenty four hours here, and has been baking a bit. Um, so let's see. Long story short, I volunteer with an organization called Team Rubicon. They're a humanitarian and disaster relief organization. So think of like some of the floods that have hit recently. We send teams down and show up and like muck out the homes and get to know the homeowners, et cetera. Right. So that, and that's done for free. Right. So um, point of all of that is I was recently asked to be um, a trainer for, or try to say like a training leader, which means I would facilitate these, um, local trainings so that um, when, when there is a crisis that people are trained up and ready to just hop on the planes and go right to these areas and there's so that there's like less confusion more efficiencies um, and people are just like I know what to do I can go mm-hmm. um, and to have more people like that is important right so what I realized with that and I have said this for years that I have been raised by teachers and preachers. Like you go through my family, everybody is either a teacher or a preacher in some capacity. Mm-hmm. And um, with that, I, I, I don't consider myself, I, I, won't, like, I won't dive too deep, deeply into this, but it's like, I don't consider myself a religious person, which separates me from my family, right? Like it's, it's a difference, right? And um, yet I have focused for 15, 20 plus years on mindset and how to think about something and how to process something. And that's a lot of times what I find in my family, they love about whatever religion it is that they choose to, to follow and practice, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, I have that piece, but I didn't have like the teacher piece. Like teacher didn't really resonate with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and coach, even though I'm trained up as a coach, was not resonating with me anymore. So I was like, what is, what, to your point, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? And then Team Rubicon came in with his training lead and so literally I, I fell in love with the role the, as far as like, you have a region, you're going out just like once a quarter, blah, 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 blah. It's all structured and set up, which I love. It's a veteran led organization. So it's very organized mm-hmm. <laughs> and hierarchical. So I love these. I love, I love the structure of that. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know what? That got me excited. And I'm like, I, my purpose then is to do, to take all of these tools I have and I've, you know, I've been putting them in that, that ebook form, right? So we have, we have the ebook, but I'm just like, I like the interaction of training because when you can train somebody in on a new skill that improves their mindset or how they are, their confidence, it's just, and that, that might be anything from like, here's how you take, here's how you sawyer, right? Here's how you cut down trees. So you clear roads, so this ambulance can get through, right? Like that's it. That's, I mean, that fills your cup for a lot of people mm-hmm. or, um, going back to more like the mindset work that I've been doing for the last, you know, forever and a day. Um, if you can, like, if I can, if I can teach somebody how to understand and train in somebody to understand the relationships better and understand, you know, why they keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again in whatever relationship dynamic they have, they're going to carry that with them for the rest of their lives. And they're going to have more intelligence about who they are, how they operate, and then they can make a choice. Mm-hmm. So they get out of that place of being stuck. And so if, when, so that, that, that is my purpose to answer like that purpose part of the question. And I didn't find that in a book, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't find that training purpose in a book. I found that by really going, and it's the thing, well, okay, maybe it is in a book. I should check myself <laughs> because it is that thing where it's like, you go and do what makes you happy. 
-hmm. by being a happiness nomad and trying out a bunch of different, you know, wearing a bunch of different social hats and finding your groups because it it took a minute for me to find Team Rubicon, right? And find that that was right for for me um, after trying out a bunch of different groups and, um, or the pickleball or whatever, right? And I have a lot of different groups to my identity. And that is very, very helpful and useful for somebody like me who is multi-passionate. Mm. and has a lot of different interests and so all that's to say is to your point you just do it right like you show up and it finds you type of a thing and and it is the the whole thing you've had it all along right from the wizard of oz like you've known all along it's always been inside of you (laughs) it sounds so cheesy Um, but it's true it is it is so cheesy but that's why it's yeah (laughs) <laughs> and, and that's what it is. And literally that's what's happened in the last 24 hours. You just sit with it and, you know, and it is really funny how it, how it, it shows up. Like when you're seeking it, like when I was seeking it so desperately, as far as like, what, like, tell me, like, what is my purpose mm-hmm. and buying those books and, you know, kind of being like white knuckle about like, this is like so stressed out about like, I need to find my purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the it was like no you you get to do all this other work first mm-hmm. sweet child <laughs> <laughs> there's no shortcut to purpose like, you, I say that again there's no shortcut to purpose you need to do no that. no turns and, out there's not <laughs> yeah it's like I sometimes ask that also PhD students like because to choose science as a profession is a dedication for a lifetime or for the PhD, which still is three to five years, sometimes longer. And and then there's also the question, so why did you choose that research topic? And for many, I think it's 50-50 from my experience. It's I didn't do research into the numbers, but like from the responses I get, it's either a curiosity, people enjoy this childlike like ability to continue asking questions to the mm-hmm. world, like keeping exploring. For me, it was also not having to settle on anything and just get busy for the sake of earning money, but to, yeah, to to be busy with something mind-boggling and challenging. Mm-hmm. But also, then there's the other league where it's really about purpose. Like, I want to cure a disease because my uncle died of it, and I can't let that happen again to anyone else. Or I want to save the world because climate change, or like any of these big quests that we are dealing with. And that's quite a burden to carry. <laughs> and for me, it was yes. a little bit of both. So I I'd, I'd love research. I love yeah, to do the experiments, to analyze the data. No, the experiment part was not so much my favorite because it's so repetitive and frustrating and tiring in life sciences. <laughs> but sitting and, and analyzing the data, I could have done that like, yeah, year years long. And, um, yeah, so now, yeah, and then, and then there's, anyway, so, long story short, so what is happiness? Like, I know what it feels like, and also it doesn't have to be the big, of course, there's also little happy moments that you can Mm -hmm. find for yourself each and every day. What is happiness for you? Is there different types of happiness, or is this just one? Yeah, I I think the the former rather than the latter. I think there's a bunch of different types of happiness. I think so. Um, I am part Finnish, and so um, the Finns have a number of words for snow. Do I know them? No, I don't. I apologize. I do not know them. I just know that there's a lot of <laughs> of words to describe snow. And I I now live in Wisconsin, grew up in Minnesota, and so um, I think like snow, happiness is kind of one of those words that covers a lot of different uh, varieties. And so, no, that's one of the reasons I do the daily video um, is because each day it's going to be be different. Um, You talked a little bit about burden and I want to kind of compare that with delight going back, going back to purpose. Then I'll circle back to this, this question is um, like for me, when I was because, okay, so what I, I have worked with people at like one on one in coaching, and then um, what I found, we were having like these really deep conversations, right? And we were going into some pretty dark places, for lack of a better word. And um, and and what I was noticing was like I was trying to 
you mentioned like the researchers that will choose their passion based on like, you know, I'm trying to cure this disease because a loved one has experienced it. That's what I was trying to do with my coaching. I was like, oh, I want to like cure like depression because it's running in my family and, or I want to cure alcoholism because that's, and I'm just like, I, me, I can't spend my time there because that it, it like it lowers my energy. And so now with like this training idea, like that delights me because I can meet people in that place. And it's, for me, it's a higher vibrational place as far as like, I'm teaching them something. They're learning a new skill. They're learning an evergreen skill or a skill that they can have for life. And so for me, that brings me happiness. Mm-hmm. And that was not a um, nuance <laughs> that I noticed until I did, mm-hmm. right? And so it's like, I was so focused on coaching isn't X, Y, Z for me that I couldn't see what um, what helping people could be until I was able to, um, until training like dropped into my lap as far as like, here's a way to help people. Here's a way to improve lives. Here's a way to do that. And so I think that's, that allows for purposes when you can maybe take what you're, you've been focusing on for so long and, and trying to make work and putting a new per, access to perspectives, putting a new perspective mm. on it and seeing it through a new lens. So it's related, but it's vibing at a higher place or, you know, it, it brings a smile to your face and delight to your body mm. rather than like a heaviness. So um, that's part of what I think happiness is. And now I know that happiness is work. It takes effort. It's not just rainbows and unicorns and, and being in the flow. And there, there definitely is that mm. to it as well, where you do feel in the flow and you do feel that. Um, so I feel that it's like happiness is a North Star. Happiness is a guidepost. Happiness is like a, a way to measure your temperature emotionally. Um, and so, and I think it's, it's something to seek out and know that it's not always to, you're human. You like, we, we're not always going to be happy. And so it, I mean, especially in the state of the world, <laughs> right? There's a lot going on and I'm a very transparent person. I like to think. And so it's like, I, and that's what I share on, on the daily more or less is that, you know, even even if like X, Y, Z happened, um, here's, here's what I learned from it. And here's, here's what I can do to like have a better day the next day kind of thing or the next time, like something like this happens, whether that be a loss or um, just overwhelm <laughs> from, from taking on too much, for example. Mm. So happiness varies. Yeah. I think. I would like to bring in the work responsibility. Mm-hmm. And accountability because but when you just work out, yeah it's basically what you're doing you're taking destiny into your own hands because many people including myself in the past I thought I need to meet the one or several people who make me happy but that concept is so wrong on so many levels and again like yeah. people t- kept telling me oh you know to find the one who makes you happy you just gotta wait and you will find the right person eventually by saying it's like, like not being religious myself none none of my family actually is religious but mm-hmm. i learned to appreciate spiritualism and the law of the universe and such things and i might still feel creepy to many of my colleagues who are all many who are natural scientists where this is like couldn't be further from the ideology that right. research comes with it was really hard to for me to accept that there's such a thing that seems to work like you said earlier like, it actually works and that's it's not, <laughs> it's not really creepy it's actually comforting once you accept that so but responsibility like you you made a a conscious dedicated commitment and decision to build your own happiness and then you're sharing with right. other people like right and and that does shift because um you know what you focus on shows up and however you want to look at that whether it's um and I think we've all had this experience where it's like okay so I I recently now have a Toyota Camry or yeah Camry yeah Camry and it's you know it's basically a silver looking car right like if you see a silver car it's Mm -hmm. that's what my car looks like but before that, I didn't pay attention to silver cars. 
right? And now I see them everywhere because that's what I have. That's what I look for. That's what I notice. That's what stands out for me, right? And so it's like, okay, well, as soon as you start, for me anyways, like when I started focusing on happiness and challenge myself and let it be a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I was also very gentle with myself at the same time, right? Like I, I don't, when I was looking for my purpose, it was very white knuckle, right? As far as like, I must find an answer to this. I ex like, not only do I expect an answer, I demand an answer and it better show up when I get done with this book, <laughs> <laughs> if not earlier. Um, and now with like this, the happiness as that's why I call it like a North star, right? A guidepost. It's like, all right, that is who, that is who I want to be. Like, I want to be a happy person. So I have that as my North star. I have that as my intention, if you will. And, um, and I know I'm going to be doing a video pretty much every day of the week, right? I might take a break here and there because I get to be human too <laughs> and come back to it. But um, you get to decide when to take a break. Yeah, like, yeah. And so um, that, that's what I mean. It's like you get to be gentle with yourself during this process too. And I think allowing it to be gentle is allowing grace with your, with your own self. Um, I know that's something that isn't, doesn't happen for a lot of us. And I think that's what we get to do with happiness. And when we soften it, um, to use a yoga term, when we soften a bit, it makes a difference and it creates a different type of experience in life. And I think that allows for more happiness to show up and to be noticed mm. when you're looking for it. So when you, and, and I know that sounds so simple to be like, oh, we'll just start focusing on happiness. It's kind of like that scene from whatever the Bill Murray movie is, as far as like, well, just stop doing that and you'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's not really a cure, right? Like that's not really the answer anyone wants to hear. And that doesn't work for everybody, obviously, but um, adding in more things that make you happy, adding in that focus on what if I get to work on happiness has been very hmm. game-changing for myself. And so I hope, it, I hope it helps other people to um, consider that as an option and consider that as, as a way to something to play with. And to be like, oh, what if that does look for me? Like, what if, what if that even like improves my life by a fraction of a percent? Mm -hmm. You know, then I think it's worth it because there's far too many people who um, are just hurting at such a desperate level. And if this can help anyone, um, then we've done our, our job well today, Joe. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it is very inspiring. It has been throughout your journey ever since we started posting these videos. It's, it's so inspiring and supporting and comforting and also being allowed are you allowing us to witness you on the journey and like i remember the first three or so it was still work for you but then suddenly something started shining like from inside yeah. and your eyes were sparkling every day like whenever you switch on the phone <laughs> like, hey guys his day yeah. <laughs> happy person i was like oh yeah wow, it works it's where right. it's like <laughs> here's the trajectory yes so, well, that's good to hear that's that's good to hear because <laughs> it's hard sometimes to see it in yourself right like you're just like all right it's 11 o'clock at night we're doing this video let's go <laughs> we said we're gonna do things so let's but, do this thing. yeah i mean it's it's like a research project you can actually see the development mm -hmm. how it's yeah. actually working is yeah, it's astonishing. And I'm getting better, better with filters, like on the fun side of social media, right? Like the, the easy, <laughs> easy uh -huh. stuff. This is what a green screen looks like. But as you were sharing, one thing that came up for me that I wanted to share as well is um, with um, with all of this, there's like I've had some dark times in my life and I'm sure other people have as well. And I think that it's pretty well known that the semicolon is a symbol of suicide awareness. And what what I have done is um, I have borrowed that symbol, if you will, and I've put a heart on either side of it. And I had defined that as like the human journey. So here's what I think. And um, is that we, we typically start in love, right? Like in, in the womb, even is what I'm talking about, like all of our needs with this human journey idea um, and taking that semicolon and having a heart on either side is that um, we all start in love. And again, I mean that like from the, from the place of being in the womb where it's like, if all of our needs weren't met, we wouldn't be here, right? Like we would not have made it. So we start in love, everything's met. We're just floating around in this goo and, and that's all great. And then at some point in life, 
right? Something, something happens and that love, perhaps we feel like it pauses and we forget that it's there. Mm. And for some of us, that's, that might be days, weeks, years, decades, even where we forget that we, we matter, that we belong, that we're loved. And what I have found by putting a heart on either side of that semicolon is that when we can remember that there is love on the other side of whatever darkness that we're experiencing at that point mm -hmm. and that other we, we need that love from like other people because we're not going to be we're not going to be um able to take ownership of loving ourselves at that point but when we can start connecting to other people in whatever way that makes sense for you whether that is you know um through through like a church or through a, a nonprofit organization volunteering or through um like a, a mindset community or whatever it might be but but showing up in some way shape or form um and just being there and being part of it and like letting yourself experience love mm -hmm. again. I, that, that helps me is what I'll say about that. And so I literally have that tattooed on my arm along with Sisu. Mm -hmm. So that, mm -hmm. that is my finished word for strength of will, perseverance against all odds and determination. And so it's something that I do like to share because, um, because happiness isn't always easy. Mm -hmm. It's not. And so that, I think that human journey captures my experience with life anyways, pretty darn well. <laughs> and so I do like to share that with people. Yeah. And that, that was something I started painting mm -hmm. as well. Like, so I, I have like an upward spiral that I paint and uh, because on an upward spiral, right? You go up for a time and things are great and wonderful, mm -hmm. but then there's that shadow part of the curve, but then you come out of it at a higher place with more knowledge and wisdom, but there's probably going to be another shadow spot and you, you know, you kind of just keep going through life. So I have a whole spiral series and then on my wall over my office, there I have the human journey. Well, the first one I painted of that. So, and that's what I mean. Painting can be very powerful. Sharing your creativity can be very powerful. So it's, you know, find a way to share your voice. And then that's also, another version of happiness. Yeah. And it's also a good reminder that every single human being on this planet is going through a roller coaster of God life. Yes. Or viral. <laughs> Hopefully upwards. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, one one moment of happiness that I also just remembered as we were sharing is after a heavy rainfall when the sun's peeking out and you're standing there like oh I'm soaking it all up. Like that makes mm -hmm. me happy. Like what are like maybe that's a homework for the listeners. What are three things you can think of that make you super happy and for the moment? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's let's come up. So I already shared one. Another one are my dogs, just to cuddle them and to every morning to look into the dog space and they're like happily adoring me no matter what like unconditionally <laughs> like dogs, dogs are great <laughs> <laughs> that makes they me such love bucks it picks, yep. it, it's a huge smile on my face and the third one is yeah being with the family my mom still around my dad but uh, passed away a couple of years ago so that was but knowing that family is always there for you or at least most of them not everyone necessarily and then friends well, that's four, but mm -hmm. let's friends and family could be one. What's yours? Let's see, my my three things. Um, so three things that make me happy. I wholeheartedly agree with you on the dogs. Like mm -hmm. we have two puppies, they're just little love bugs. And um, for a time we did not have dogs in the house, and it was a definitely a different, we were in a different place, and it was so yeah, dogs are amazing, love our dogs. Um, and I'm also with you on the sun. I love winter sunrises and I've actually taken like that palette color and have started using it in my business, to be honest. And so I just, I love that energy. I love those colors. I like, I love the winter, the winter sunrise. Um, it's just so, so pretty. Um, and then really for me, anything that helps another person. And that, that's really what, what fills my cup is when when I can do like hard work and make a difference mm -hmm. that I don't know if that's the farm kid in me or what you want to call with that, but it's like, I, maybe that's, maybe that's the finished part of me with like the Sisu and the grit and the, <laughs> and the all of that, like Absolutely. it must be hard. And then I just feel so great afterwards. Right. Um, and, and I think that's where I'm at now. So those are my three. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. And you're turning all of Thanks. your wisdom into a booklet. I am. I am. So I'm taking one one thing at a time and turning them into a kind of grab and go items. And in this case, it's an ebook. So I um, I'll have them on the website. The website is beingahappyperson.com. But the first one I have is Spark, and it's 
called Spark for a couple of reasons because it's the first one, so it's intended to spark, right? <laughs> <laughs> spark is starting to be a whole catalyst, but really that that ebook's purpose is to uncover your love story. And what I mean by that is like, what is your what is your love dynamic? Like, what is your love imprint? What is what 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 is the story you tell yourself about love? Mm -hmm. And um, to take that story and then be able to understand your past, present, and future relationships through that lens of the story you've been telling yourself mm -hmm. and have been living and existing and attracting those relationships with, and whether they're romantic or um, platonic relationships, right? And giving you some more choices as you move forward with, well, do you want more of the same or do you want something different? If you want something different, take a look at these five steps. So um and it's a short, like for all of that, which it does deliver on, I, I can assure you, um, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's less than 30 pages. It might be 20, it's 25 pages start to finish. So I took out all the nonsense. <laughs> there is no fluff in that. No redundancy. <laughs> there is no fluff. <laughs> right. Cool. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Well, people can find that on being a happy person.com. Well, thanks for sharing that. And we put the link in the show notes, AKA the blog post. Um, where you find this podcast episode and yeah so the the purpose of uh, us in our conversation for today is to also and the the purpose of my work is actually to bring joy and happiness into the workplace that is known as academia because there seems to be a dialect thereof and i dedicated and committed myself to to be one of the few who bring happiness back to academia um thank you for your work in uh, in doing that because it's, it's thank fantastic you. to have these conversations and to i i mean i could i i'm so excited to see like where academia goes with happiness and and sharing like some of the science behind it and just seeing what unfolds with all of that because i think those i just got goosebumps right now and granted it's wisconsin it's winter it's cold here but it's um it's fantastic work that you're doing so thank you Mm, and thank you because you're very much supporting me in doing the work and i'll also look up some research papers and articles on happiness i'm sure there's research out there from psychology and neuroscience this and that um so that'd be interesting to look into yes mm, all science backed much like yeah discussions we're having <laughs> even if we look up the science only after the, we have the conversation but <laughs> you will also find those in the in the blog post Thanks, Sarah, and have a fantastic day. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> and speak soon again whenever you're, well, when, whenever you, we, yeah, you will feel for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I'll be here. <laughs>